shall have destroyed Carthage. Every man, woman, and child, many years ago. Hello everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Total War Room 2, the Julia Campaign. In the last session, our war here in the Germanic tribal region continued, and uh, yes, we are getting the upper hand, it's good to see. The Subi Doobies, in an attempt to save their worthless hides, merged with another faction here and formed the German Confederation, and they are eking out a meagre existence in Budorgis. So... Our newly recruited legion here, Defensores Germanica, will be responsible for maintaining a defensive presence on the borders here, and they will keep close watch on these guys to ensure that they don't try anything funny. Meanwhile, what we will be doing is we will be taking our two legions here, the Dagger of Rome combined with Bastus's own Legio Sanguine, and we shall march north to capture another settlement in the Severe region, and that will be Rougion. So that is our that is our short-term goal, and then from there we shall press on a little bit further north onto Alibu to unify the uh, the province once and for all. So that is the ultimate goal for the next session or two, and uh, we'll crack on with that very shortly. Just uh, off camera, did a little bit of looking about and taking my time to analyze things and noticed rather foolishly as I went to the province screen that uh, Corsica at Sardinia was not producing any money at all because I had uh, unticked the tax button so now my income shot up from 4,400 to 4,800 so that was a, a massive blob on my part for the past few episodes I haven't even noticed that so we've missed out on some income there but we sorted that out now We've also done a little bit of building work down here in Kelopferdom, I think it is. We're building a shrine to Mercury. We're upgrading that. So that's uh, done as well. And I think that was pretty much the extent of my off-camera work. <clears throat> so if, as we take a look at the uh, the main s summary screen here, obviously Quintus Cornelius Bassus is head of my uh, household. Carrying on, carrying on his campaign and uh, going pretty smoothly now that Scipio's dead nobody else has tried to kill him yet <laughs> which is always a bonus but uh, Cornelia have a new leader of course Scipio dying in the last session and uh, now the chappy who is heading one of the legions down in Carthage he is now head of their house pa Pasuvius Berenius Saturnius a massive fifth 56 Gravitas could cause some issues if he starts uh, to uh, conquer land and start gaining influence in the Senate, but for now he's just uh, sat pretty and uh, not causing us too much concern. Uh, he's 46, so he's got a few years left in him. And then we go to the House of Junior. Remember this chappy? Spurius Sonatius Flavus was a brother in arms of the Julia family. He swanned off to the House Junior under an adoption. And uh, not only is he a House Julia member now, he is the House Julia leader. So uh, he's risen up in the world, it has to be said, from an underling of the Junior, from the underling of the Julia faction to the head of the Junior. Although their pitiful, uh, pitiful house only has 10% of the Senate influence, so uh, perhaps uh, he's moved across and been raised to this position in the hope that he can raise this party's influence, raise their prestige somehow. I doubt it. But there, that is the situation. Three of the bigwigs. He's in Carthage, he's in Medlan, and he is campaigning. So uh, we'll see how they interact with each other as time progresses. Is there going to be another Scipio on the cards? Somebody who meddles in our affairs and tries to put themselves under the... Uh, good graces of the Senate. We'll have to wait and see. And finally, these guys. Our clan states, the Raiti, taking revenge on the uh, Freezy, who did conquer Tully Ferdin for a short time. I'm hoping that they're going to take down the Freezy in the next couple of turns, but they seem to be turning their back, as if they've come up here, had a look and thought, do you know what? No, we won't bother. 
Although there is quite a lot of smoke and stuff coming out of here, so I'm wondering if this settlement has some kind of plague or something. I don't know. It seems rather bizarre. But we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on that situation. It's time progresses. So, all that's left for us to do now is end the turn, and then in the next uh, turn we'll continue on on our quest for glory. And I sincerely hope that this session's commentary is not going to be as horrendous as the last session. Um, don't know what happened, I did everything as I usually do, but for some reason the quality was Her horrendous. Are clear. A treaty between us would please the gods. I have no wish to offend the gods. No! Suppose you don't. Also, yes, something I did something I did off camera as well. I actually, uh, if I go to the Turdy Tani, we can't quite see them just yet, but I did manage to broker a trade agreement with them um, by offering them a non-aggression pact at the same time. So we now have a non-aggression pact and trade with the Turdy Tani. So that was something else I did as well. Right then, so uh, defensive alliance with the Deorsi. We have been side by side with these uh, with these guys for some time. Uh, they are at war with the Erevisci, who are on our borders, and who we are a little bit red-faced with. So should we, the Deorsi have one land, they have two lands, they have three lands, they are good friends with the RDA, good friends with the BFE, so they are good friends with Athens, so they're a good faction to get in with. If we get in good graces of the DLC, we also automatically will start getting some good uh, relations with some of their other friends, perhaps. The Erevisci, they seem to only have one settlement. They're at war with a few people around them, and they are on our borders with Istros. So we could do with these, we could do with these guys being eliminated. Maybe we could eliminate these and, and, and give it to the DLC. Bit of a ludicrous idea, perhaps at some point, but uh, defensive alliance, sworn to protect each other if war is declared on them. We already have trade. We already have a non-aggression pact. Should we go one step further? Hmm. Some moderate to offering as well, so we can't ask for any cash for this. Um. Do I want to be sucked into any of their walls if they are attacked? I don't think they are going to be attacked anytime soon, because most of the people around them like them. So, uh, other than these guys, and if they get involved in a war, we'd be happy to take them down, to be fair. Because uh, they are a little bit of a thorn in our side at the moment, along with uh, this faction here. So I think we'll accept. We'll accept. We don't usually go for defensive alliances, but... Uh, We'll go for this one. We have finished the research of concrete. And now we are researching advanced construction techniques. Yeah, I've got no trade with the Pontus, I imagine they've been eradicated then. So this allows us to uh, recruit, build, build aqueducts and gladiator school, a level 3 building there. And I have gone for advanced construction techniques because that allows me to upgrade my towns to level 3. So my small towns and my capitals can now be upgraded to level 3 once I get this researched. So it's the next not logical step. Um, so that's good. Now we can upgrade, we need battering ram to be able to build the field engineer's workshop. I was planning on doing that next. Which is more pressing? Which is more pressing guys? Which is more pressing? And if I totally forgot about that. Okay, I think we'll wait on that. We'll go for this one. I really do want to see some siege equipment now. We are campaigning, we need to bash down some walls. Ladders are uh, very exposed, keeps you know makes us vulnerable to uh, arrow fire and things. If we could knock those gates down and walls down and towers down with some artillery, that would be glorious. So yeah, we'll go for the battering ram to enable us to uh, 
to build those uh, those units. Five turns. Right. Farms have been completed. The Volke and the As the Asti have uh, have been destroyed. Reiti has joined the war with the Simbri, who I believe are the owners of this land up here. Why they have joined the war there, I do not know, but they have. And we have got our Triarii recruited into the Defensoris Germanica Legion. Which means that they are ready to head now north into Lopferdum. Call this a garrison. Uh, wait a minute. At your command. These guys can head out. Commander, you have further orders. There we go. And he will go in. At your command. To your duties, men. To my duties, indeed. Right. So we're losing minus one per turn there. Not a massive issue. Commander. He can upgrade his legion because in here is um, a workshop which enables us to upgrade our armour and weaponry which is always a nice bonus. We have a level 1 building that requires upgrading to Amphora Maker. At the cost of 4 food we can upgrade that but we won't bother for now. And of course ready for battle. the unit recruitment. We were going Are you ready to serve Rome? for 4 lots of the longbow hunters. And we're going to go for one unit of Roman Ballista. So two turns and this army will be pretty much done and ready to defend. So if we hold shift and grade them all at the same time, that's pretty much bankrupted us now. <laughs> um, but we're good to go almost. Right, so that's handy. As we look now down to Kasurgis, obviously the the uh, the garrison here has been moved out, so now this once again turns to uh, rebellion. Not overly concerned because they are in close proximity and can uh, intercept when necessary. So we'll uh, just have to keep a keep an eye uh, on that situation. But that's about that's about it really. 362 to spend. Nothing left to spend too much. So uh, let's have a look. They haven't attacked yet. That's a crying shame. Nothing to do there. Um, okay, okay. I don't know why the Pontus have uh, stopped to trade with us. Have we have we said something to offend them? Mm, unfriendly. Well. You can't have it all, I'm afraid. Right, but we are gaining 5,000 per turn. We have a massive 60 food reserve uh, pool, which is absolutely marvellous. It will assist us when we start to construct those level 3 buildings. Um, so what is left for us to do? Um, well, Legio Sanguine is fully stacked and there's uh, no attrition or anything to worry about. So what we're going to do, we're not quite ready to attack yet, but we will move into enemy lands. This is something I haven't done yet. I'm going to give it a try now. We'll move into position, we'll move about here. We own the lands of the Rugi, they won't be happy about that. They're going to start moaning and groaning and really couldn't give a crap, to be perfectly frank with you. They can moan all they like. We're in forced march. Um, oh, Boulder Dash. Did I have to take the stance off before I moved? I could well have done. Should have taken the stance off before I moved. Oh, Boulder Dash, that means we're going to be attacked or could be attacked and ambushed. What I wanted to do is I wanted to uh, try something new. I'm going to go here and do it. Oh, shut up. I think I gave a flying monkeys about your lands. Right, what I was going to try and do is I was going to try the raiding stance. Um, raid nearby trade routes and settlements for income and forage supplemental supplies from the area. Cost 50% of a force's total movement range to assume the stance, so we've obviously moved too far now to, to, to raid. But it, it's cheaper upkeep, it's better morale, and we affect their public order and their growth, and of course diplomatic penalties. But we also gain a, a nice healthy boost at our income, like it could be as much as 400 per turn, so I wanted to do, give that a try. But it uh, looks like we're not going to get an opportunity to do it, so... Uh, We'll just have to t attack them in the next turn and take them down and uh, get our money that way. The old-fashioned way. The brutish force way. 
Suffering minus three per turn. Right, okay. Just take a quick look at the building works then and see if we... Oh, we can't. We have no money. All right. Done and done then this turn, I think. There's nothing else really for us to worry about too much. Just double check with the, the surrounding areas, making sure that uh, nothing amiss is, is going on. Our defensive alliance. Our defensive allies seem to be... Uh, going about their business quite happily. The Mercedes-Lay, they have quite a few troops, the mercedes -Lay. They're going to be our next targets. Oh, when did they capture Thapsus? I thought that was in the hands of the Libyans. Bear with me, folks. The mercedes -Lay. they are sweeping. Sweeping down here. Libya are losing ground. I'm sure this was all Libyan land at one point. Now the Mercedes they seem to be uh, doing a number on them. Boy, oh boy. If we do, well, I say if. When we do start to conquer lands in Africa, we might just have a bit of a war on our hands with these people. They're getting slightly uh, powerful. That'll certainly spice things up a touch. Right. Mm hmm hmm. Okie dokie. So we'll end the turn, and then the next turn we'll be ready to uh, fight the uh, Rugi, Rugi, what are they called again? I don't bloody care. <laughs> fight for Rujon. <sighs> it's going to be quite the fight as well. <clears throat> They were easily carrying on their epic conquering adventure. Hmm. Non-aggression pact. Agree here, if the spirits wish it, to proper treaties between. No thanks. Thanks for the offer, but no thanks. You're too far away, and I don't care about you. Trade agreement dissolved with Tylus. Another one falls by the wayside. Never a trade agreement that goes by the wayside is a blow to our income. We're not happy about this. Our hidden agent has been exposed. Um, war declared. The Arverni on the Freezy. Oh dear. Dear, oh dear. It's looking like bad times for El Freezy. They are suffering attrition, probably due to lack of food. Smoke is billowing out of their settlement, probably due to some kind of travesty. <laughs> And the Raiti are ready to strike, and the Arverni are getting involved as well. Surely their existence is coming to a close. Okay, we've got a few uh, trade increases here. Nothing too notable, I don't think. And we have our Auxiliary Longbow Hunters. First archers that we've ever had in this game, and uh, look forward to using them for the first time, whenever that may be. Right, so. This place is stabilizing we're happy about that this place isn't not isn't stabilizing and we're not quite happy about that now we could increase public order by increasing the temple of mars to level three it's going to cost us a bit of food but we have already a massive pool so should we try that i think we shall certainly would help the situation it wouldn't cure it but it'd certainly help so we'll go for level three temple there 3,600 left to spend. It's, it's okay. Nothing left for us to build in that province. I think what we'll do now is we'll go back all the way down to um, this settlement here, Corrales. We do have um, some land ready to upgrade. We also can start upgrading here as well. Extra food from the, from the fishmongers. It costs public order. <coughs> but public order is already high. So that's definitely a, a, a possibility as well to increase our food reserves when we need it. But for now we'll uh, increase the last settlement in this province to its maximum capacity. And what shall we build within it? Well, we have recently researched some technology that finally allows us to build aqueducts, health uh, buildings. But, uh, well, we don't need the public order and we don't need any growth because we're already maxed out, so we really don't need that. So what we'll do is we'll go for another 
public forum and uh, maybe make that into something like an amphitheater or something uh, fun for the for the populace to enjoy okay so that's the building work sorted um, pretty much everything else is uh, is level two and I'm sort of sporadically going to start phasing in some level three building work when we have uh, finished up here okay so now is the time to strike for cause for some rather foolish reason this settlement has moved their full stack ships somewhere completely out of the reach out of reinforcement range which has left them pretty ripe for the for the striking i could even take this with one legion now but we won't take it with one legion because we have two so uh Ready for battle. the dagger of rome will get into position round about here On the move. He's suffering a little bit of attrition, which is a crying shame. I don't know why that happened to him, but uh, maybe it's because he wasn't on the road. Uh, who who knows? And uh, we'll attack with Legio Sanguine. Why the hell not? It's going to be fun. Declare war. They have no allies. They're isolated and right for the picking. And this is going to be an epic mauling because they have, uh, oh, they do have some reinforcements. So the reinforcements are in range somewhere along the lines. Wait a minute. That's the garrison army. That's the army in here. And they are ships, and they are some loose band somewhere in the middle. No, they don't have. No, that full that full stack ship army is has moved out of the range, so uh, that's fine. Right, we have uh, strength. Pretty uh, sewn up here. If we are to resolve, I'm just going to take a quick peek. We're going to lose a quarter of our forces. Seventy-five percent. We're going to lose seventy-two percent. Seventy-five, seventy-two. It's a bit too much, really. A bit too much. Not happy with Bassus's army suffering such heavy losses, so uh, we'll we'll fight this ourselves. So if we go uh, cancel, we go quick save, and we go to battle. 